I am Mikael Åkerfeldt, which is the Swedish way to pronounce my name. Uh, and I'm the lead singer and guitar player of Ope. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Lindgren. I play the guitar. Uh, my name is Martin Mendes, and I play bass. My name is Per, and I play keyboards. Uh, my name is Martin, and I play drums in Ope. Now, I'd also like to ask you about a certain person called Eric. Uh, Eric uh, isn't here right now, but <laughs> it's maybe coming out later. In the <laughs> now, is Eric your, your darker side? Uh, not darker maybe, but as some people look at it that way, but Eric is, uh, is doing stuff that Martin doesn't <laughs> dare to do. <laughs> so Eric's the guy that you lay all the blame at when, uh, when okay, fair enough. I guess the best thing about being an opeth is that I, I write the songs so I get most money. <laughs> it's a lifelong dream for me to... to uh, to be in a band and to tour the world, I guess, you know, and it's, uh, I love playing music and I love writing songs, but, you know, it's, it's really hard to say what's the best thing. It all differs. Sometimes it's, it's a, a curse being the songwriter because everybody expects you to write the, the stuff, you know, and uh, sometimes when you come up with these things that you think is amazing, you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, you feel like, wow, you know, this is fantastic. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm in it for the music, but so that's a good thing, obviously. Uh, I like the music. Uh, but also, we tour a lot, which is a good thing because you get to see a lot of places and uh, that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise, you know. So, touring is probably a good part of it. What for you is the, the best part of being an Opeth? Uh, it's really hard to say, but I don't know. I really enjoy the whole career. Actually, with Opeth, it's like yeah, it's really fun. But I don't know. It's like I like to play live. That's my the best thing in the band. The thrill of the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing is to be with four other guys that enjoy music as much that I do. I think. It's a and are all those four guys in the band? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just thought I'd check, just thought I'd check with the whole Eric thing. Yeah, yeah. What, what for you is uh, the, the best part of being an Opeth? Well, it's um, obviously playing music that you like. You know. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for you, what's going to be the, the hardest part? I suppose touring must take out of you as well, eh? Well, touring is probably the answer to that too, because uh, you're never home. Uh, uh, the good thing about that is probably that uh, being home is great, you know, but I never see home, so, I w you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's got its good side and its bad sides. I guess it's recording, I don't like to record, it's too much stress, but I mean, I love to hear the albums afterwards, man. What do you think is so difficult about recording? Is it being in like that one space for a long time or...? I guess it's because we never rehearse and <laughs> it's kind of tough on the studio. I think it's... The same for every guy or girl who's in a touring band is, uh, I guess, the waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging about. Yeah. Airports. Uh, not a favorite place to be, really. No, at all. No. Have you got a favorite airport? Um, not really. No. <laughs> You've never been asked that before, have you? No. It's <laughs> kind of a strange question. Uh, it's it's fun to tour and everything, but it's it's maybe to not be home very much. But, but uh, yeah. it's it's a it's a price that you have to pay. So there are times where you think it gets close to not being worth it, or does it never come that close? I, I think it's absolutely worth it, but it's a, it, it's a, it, can, it can be hard sometimes, and it's and it's often the most part is fun so yeah, it's yeah. A but is that also then the worst part then of being in the band as well like you said a, a kind of pressure coming in what's that like well it's become a pressure you know because we've been uh, doing this band i've been in this band for 16 years you know put out eight records and all our records that we've ever put out has got great reviews and all this stuff you know i try to not think too much about it but somewhere in the background there is a certain amount of pressure that i want to come up with something I think for for myself come up with something that I think well this is really good this yeah. uh, is worthy of being called uh, yeah. open I guess yeah. right and with me I have open guys thanks very much for chatting to me I appreciate that well, cheers for coming down right well uh, first thing I want to say obviously uh, Ghost Reveries tour is taking you worldwide 
Uh, it's the third time you've been to to UK in this cycle, yeah. uh, and you obviously the venues have been going up and up. What's that been like? Like stepping up, so it's like kind of two thousand plus. Has I mean, that been like a quite a good a good feeling? What's that been like? Well, it's obviously better to, to play big events every time rather than the opposite. You know? so yeah, if yeah. We've been going down. It wouldn't be so fun to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make a big difference though? They like two guys like playing the different size arenas, a different kind of gig all round. What do you reckon, Michael? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but is it like a different kind of feeling, like for a smaller gig, or does it not matter what size venues you do? Or well, I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. We're always going to try and play as good as we can, and, you know, yeah. rock it, you know. But uh, uh, I think it would, because, like, for instance, on the last time we did a US tour, we played like big arenas, yeah. and that you feel isolated, you know. Uh, so I prefer playing, say, this uh, size venue uh, as opposed to big arenas yeah. and we all like playing small pubs and that kind of stuff because it's it's always it always ends up great you know we played a like a, a Mexican restaurant somewhere in like <laughs> Little Rock or whatever yeah. it was and it was fantastic yeah. but they say that's where rock belongs either in the pubs or the stadiums there's like no in between apparently yeah, I guess. but like for, for you guys I mean what you mentioned obviously the US and stuff there then what has been like like it's been a worldwide tour. What's been your kind of favourite countries that you've seen? Have you all got like kind of different favourites? What about yourself? Australia. I like Australia. That's uh, how come? What was the difference? Well, it, it's a great climate to start with. You know, it's not yeah. freezing cold. But Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same in Sweden, so yeah, yeah. we're used to. But I think uh, uh, crowds are good and uh, the shows are good. You know, so it's always a blast. What about yourself, my man? The shows used to be always the same. It's just. Besides the so the show and the weight, you know, yeah, yeah. And stuff. So of course, Australia is nice. So you can go to the beach or whatever. Australia's winning here, hands down. I'm not liking this. What about yourself? <laughs> well, I gotta say, Australia. I spent my honeymoon there. I love Australia. I'm gonna fucking move there. But we we don't mind. I like playing in Stockholm because it's I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not doing great here, UK fans. That's how we go get one by yourself, man. London. Uh, my favorite is uh, the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Best crowd, Just said you're best, the UK. best <laughs> venues, best facilities, backstage. Yeah, just we all agree on that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yourself, man? Australia and New Zealand, I think, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent guys. Well, obviously this DVD goes on sale in Australia almost yeah. immediately. Yeah. But like, so it's been a, it's been a kind of fantastic. Job. Your, your fans are quite quite dedicated fans. Why do you think that is? Why do you think you've been able to hold on to them through like kind of different album sounds as well? But the fans have kind of stuck with you. Why do you think that is? It's a mouthful that question. We have some it? kind of cool, you know honesty about what we're doing. I think uh, yeah. people can see that. Yeah. Right yeah. Anyway. yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's something that kind of transcends all the albums that have kept people coming back for for more? Really. Well, I, I like to think that there's a, a quality to our music, you know, and it, it's taken us a long time and a lot of hard work to to get where we're at. Not like we're big rock stars or anything, but we, it's it's been a definite you know uh, step up for us the last couple of years and it's it's uh, it all, all comes down to touring i guess and also f for uh, uh, the record label's been behind us yeah you know ever since we our first record label i guess you know and uh, i guess we gained you know more and more fans with each new album and uh, i think they stick around for some reason you know it's not like a even though there's been a certain amount of hype around this band it hasn't affected the fan base in, in that sense that all of a sudden we're big and then we're, yeah. we're nobody cares. It's always been a gradual increase uh, in the amount of fans and, and our success, I guess. So what do you kind of feel like, obviously because you did uh, the cover for of Deep Purple as well uh, with the album, what, what was the idea behind that then? Well, I think it was my idea to do the, the, that cover. I, I always loved that song so yeah. much, you know, and I think all of us are big fans of Deep Purple and it's a bit, you know, uh, I guess a bit odd to play the purple song and, and choose that era with uh, David Coverdale. And yeah. But, uh, you know, I love everything with Deep Purple, but that song is just one of the most beautiful rock ballads ever written. And I don't think we do it justice, really, you know, but uh, we, we still, you know, wanted to to record that song. We recorded it like a couple of years back, but yeah. it never ended up on, on the record. So now we record it again and we've been playing it live. And, you know, I just love it. It's also the only song that we know. <laughs> well, that's a good excuse as well. No, but like, how do you feel your style kind of is now? Well, at least it's sort of the eighth album uh, through. Do you feel like um, your sort of style's coming to a kind of forefront of where you want to be? Obviously, you've been there from yourself from the start. And like, mm. do you feel now, like, with the kind of uh, time signature changes, the kind of syncopation that you're going forward, do you feel like you're really starting to write, this is actually where we wanted to get to? 
I think we we were pretty confident, like when we did the first album, we yeah. we found our sound or whatever, you know. But we didn't really have a career, you know. It was just a dream that you know we were all, I guess, musicians, but we couldn't uh, we couldn't spend all our time on 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 being a musician because there was no work for us, there was no tours or no gigs or anything. So that's, I think, where we're at now is is ideal for us, and maybe slightly a bit too much as well right. because we're working all the time you know i think um we're one of the hardest working metal bands out there you know we we keep looking at like what what iron maiden did you know f for say the power slave tour and it's nothing like what it's we're doing no yeah it's and, so they, and they've got such a reputation as well for like yeah, yeah constantly hard touring. touring band and obviously they've been around for a long time but they yeah. did like four shows and that was like four shows in a row and then like two days off or whatever we do i think we did like 16 shows in a row right and we play for a long time we play two hours yeah yeah sometimes we play three hours you know so, so do you feel like oh if you say i oh, iron maiden yeah yeah settle down yeah what exactly. the hell do you think you're playing that <laughs> yeah. well guys it's obviously Thanks all going Sebastian. fantastically well but obviously any plans in for a new album in 2007 anything planned well, it's to start we're gonna, you know, by the, by Christmas we we've been out for I think almost 19 months. So yeah. we, we're gonna start with a break, you know, and then just just get our shit together basically. But you know, there's gonna be an album, right? Eventually, <laughs> just a break just now then, yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, well, it's important, you know. I'm quite quite happy. We haven't had any big arguments or fights within the band. We we get along really well, and it's quite amazing for since we've been out for such a long time. But. We definitely need a break, you know. I think all of us need to do something else. He needs to go fishing, and he needs to <laughs> whatever. You know, it's like uh, everybody has, you know, their own private lives, which has been put on hold for almost two years now. Yeah. And we need to to go back. I have a daughter, you know, and yeah. a wife, and you know, we all have girlfriends, pretty much. With <laughs> Inside information there, man. What's going on there? Well, I think you all deserve a break, especially Martin, or so, or so I should say Eric, because he yeah, hit my Eric. microphone. Hit my microphone before we came in. I was like, ah, what's going on? Oh, it's yeah. Eric. But guys, yeah, that was Eric, that one. You blew me on him. <laughs> guys, thank you very much for chatting to us, and good luck. Cheers for that. Thank you. Thank you.